happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. I am up on this glorious Sunday checking out the gardens. This is what I look like when I wake up sleeping in a braid and <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> but um, I put on some clothes just to come outside and check on the gardens. I do this a lot. As a gardener, it really is important that we look at our plants often. This is our best way to figure out if we have any pests or any watering issues, any disease or fungal things. Um, so it's important to come check things out. The peppers look like they're doing okay. There's not any huge growth or anything that I'm noticing. They haven't been in very long. But, you know, these are the serranos here. This here is a weed. I'm gonna try to pull that out. I try to stay on top of the weeds. We have uh, a lot of violets here that are popping up everywhere. My old house, it was morning glories. Here it's violets. Eee, there we go. Um, so everything here looks good. Getting some flowers. That's always a good sign. This is the pimento pepper that at my old house, I tried growing pimento peppers and had terrible, terrible luck. But I'll tell you what, I don't know if you can see that right there. Those are some buggies. Um, so even at this early stage, you can see there might be some issues that pop up that you may want to stop while you can. I don't know. These look like probably aphids. So I am going to find something that I can come out here and clean these up with. Um, you can use neem oil. Neem oil is a spray that you can use for aphids. I'll be honest, I've never seen it completely take care of them. Um, I do continue to use it in the hopes that it will work, um, but best defense I've found is to get like packing tape and come and you know dot the leaves and get them off um, you want to do it as soon as you start to see them because you don't want them to multiply um, so that's something I can do today these are those candy cane peppers these are I, I'm just shocked there's already peppers here so that's rather exciting and these are new to me so I'm not sure what these are gonna do these are the eggplant, and they had a little bit of a struggle starting out. They wilted on me pretty good and gave me a little scare. I thought I was going to lose them, but I think it was just transplant shock. Oh, are you friend or foe? I don't know. This is the game you play. I'm not sure. The fact that I see many little babies with it tells me that's probably not a friend. Um gosh darn it. Anyway, it gives me something else to talk to you guys about, that's for sure. <laughs> um, so anyway, they, they seem to have made a comeback, so I am very happy about that. They're doing very nice here. Uh, everything in this bed probably could use some fertilizer soon, now that it's getting established. So that is something that I will look to be doing in the coming weeks. These are the chocolate cherries back here. and They're still little, but they look okay. They look like they're doing good. Some of the little leaves have some areas dying off. That could be from transplant shock, nothing to worry about. Um, I also trim my tomatoes and you want to leave the bottom of the stem fairly open and trim some of the suckers. They're too little to do that now. Um, I usually let them get quite a bit bigger before I start any of that, so that's a, another video for another day. But if your tomatoes are further along than mine, that's something you might, might want to look up. Um, I've heard mixed things on it. Some people think you should do it. Some people think you don't shouldn't. I've had good luck doing it. So, um, in fact, I can probably show you guys what a sucker looks like. These are a little bit bigger. These are my Cherry 100s. These are doing really, really good. And see this guy right here? That's what is known as a sucker. He's in between this little armpit of the plant. And for the 
sake of what I'm demonstrating, I'm just gonna show you, you can rip them right off. It's as simple as that. Um, there's multiple reasons why you do this. Um, number one, it can help keep some airflow in and around your plant. And it also, oh, here's another one, keeps the energy going out to the stronger branches. Otherwise, the energy goes to these little, these little ones and they grow. So these over here are the Mr. Stripey. These ones and my Amish paste are over here. These ones have been giving me a dreadful fright. They have quite a bit of transplant shock and I put them in the garage because we got that frost, then brought them out again. I'm not sure if that was too much for them or if they should have been hardened off again or if they were never hardened off correctly to begin with. I have no idea. I got these from the farmer's market, but they do appear to be getting a little greener. So it's slow, but you can see the difference between these leaves here. You know, these ones over here are a lot yellower than those here. So I think they're, they're gonna do okay. These ones are struggling a little bit more. These are the Amish paste. But again, I mean, that looks greener than the other one. It's probably harder to tell in the video, but um, you know, you can see this leaf here is super yellow and that one's a more lime green color. So they're doing okay. I just keep an eye on them and uh, we'll tend to them as needed and maybe get some more fertilizer on them. Fish emulsion might be something that really helps. So my whole garden could probably use a dose of the fish emulsion so that it can uh, really flourish here. Over here in the last bed is my squash and these are doing okay. They're still fairly small. I looked at pictures from last year and for whatever reason, mine last year were huge at this time. Already got some flowers coming there. Those are female flowers because you can see the little, little squash. Um, those will not turn into anything unless there's some male blossoms around and none of them are, are blossoming yet. So those probably aren't going to turn into much if we're being honest. Cucumbers. These cucumbers are in a little bit of a struggle. I think same thing between the frost and um, transplant shock. They are just confused and I think they also might have gotten a little bit dry when I had them in the pots one day. So there's quite a bit here that I'm not thrilled about and I lost one. So they're not happy. If these don't start making a comeback, I will rip them up and just get new ones. I think the ones in the front were maybe the pickling and the ones in the back are another variety of slicing cucumber. So those I get to keep an eye on. Over here was okra and same thing. I had these in a pot that I think I like get just a hair too dry. And I lost pretty much all of the okra except that one. <laughs> um, this one here might, no, I don't know. That one may not come back. I did go ahead and put some seeds in here. Oh, in fact, here's some here. These are okra seeds. So I'm just gonna pop those down in the dirt. Um, these were from seeds from, I think last year, maybe the year before. So we'll see if they germinate. That's obviously the hope. I sort of just opened the seed pod over the entire bed and went, okay, God, do your work. <laughs> um, it may work, it may not. I see there's tons of them up here that are not down in the dirt. So I don't know, that was more of a Hail Mary. I just threw them in. Um, again, that's something that I probably uh, in the coming weeks can can pick up some more if they don't if they don't sprout. So that's why this bed looks a little bit empty. That was supposed to be my okra. <laughs> um, I am going to do one more bed. I have another load of soil ordered for 517. It's going to go uh, right in line with these right there. That's where I will probably plant some beans and squash. So um, I have to wait for the soil to do it. So I ran out of room because I got a little excited over my tomatoes. 
But I started a few bean seeds over here in some of my planters. These boxes over here, I started some nasturtium seeds and in one of them, I put down beans. I think it's in this one, this first one. So I just did this like two days ago, so there's nothing popping up yet. Oop, in fact, there's one more. Make sure he stays under there. Beans are pretty easy to grow, so I'm not worried about it. Um, and then you saw me separating some of these out yesterday, which I left my spoon. Good job, me. And uh, these are the yellow pear tomatoes that I'm bringing back uh, from the volunteers. This whole bucket is still something I can separate. I just haven't. And what I will likely do is I've got one, two, three, four, five, six of these buckets. I might just put one in each of these buckets because the sweet potatoes, I think I'm gonna put in something larger this year. So these can be free for tomatoes. They're large enough. I'm not sure if you can see how big they are. They're like two feet, two foot square. Um, I don't know how much it holds here. I probably will have to put some amended compost in here. So I'm over here with my tape getting the aphids and there was something I wanted to show you guys. I flipped over a leaf and here is a friend. That is a ladybug. See those little aphids there? Guess what ladybugs eat? Aphids. So now I'm not sure I want to pull all the aphids. If he's snacking, um, I may just come back and check later to make sure. Um, we're going to leave him right where he is and let him chow down. And I hope he gets fat and happy. Maybe he'll bring a few friends to dinner. That is the plan. In the meantime, um, on some of the other plants, I'm just going to scope them out. This one looks okay. Um, just to speak on aphids for a minute, um, they, I don't know if they will kill your plant, but what they do is they suck the juice out of the leaves. Uh, not as big of a deal as your plants get bigger, but when they're little like this, it can damage them pretty well. So what I was doing, I don't know if you can see on this tape, is I'm literally sticking it to the leaves and pulling them off. And it's the best way that I have found as a deterrent. And you just have to kind of stay on top of it. The more you grab of them, you know, the better. Oh, see, look at these suckers. I don't know if you can see that. This is hard to do one-handed. But they're on there. I pull them right off. No bueno, you do not get to snack on my new plants. Go find a new home. Oh, this one's bad. Look at that. There are a bunch right here. If you can see that. Definitely aphids. There's a white one on there. Little babies are kind of green. Beauty of the tape. I can take this whole leaf and just pop it on the tape. And lift. All gone. All of them. All in one swoop. There's another cluster there. I wonder if I can zoom in. See them? Nasty little boogers that they are. There's one other area <laughs> that I always have problems with the aphids, and that is on my green onions, which are up on the deck here. So I'm going to show you these ones look a little bit different than the ones down in the garden. These ones are black. They're an onion aphid, and I've been spraying up here, but 
let's take a look. Okay, so you guys have seen these before. I've had these forever. I leave them in here to grow. Every once in a while, they'll drop their seed pods so that they can grow new onions. Um, but you'll see here at the base, we've done this before too. Those are aphids. Little rotten aphids. So, I mean, I'll be honest, they're not hurting these plants that much. These are established, so, you know, it could be a lot worse, but I'd rather not have them. So I'm doing the same thing, tape, grabbing what I can to at least uh, put a little bit of a decline in their population. Um, I will spray with my neem oil. But like I said, I've been spraying these and still they end up all over my plants. So I don't know. I don't know if there's a really good way to rid them for good. I've just found this to be the best way to handle them. This, oof, there's a lot on there. Sorry guys, you can't live here. I know it's rather inviting. I like it here too. Uh, that's probably not all of them, but I need to get over to this other side here, I think. They will be under every crevice, every single stalk. <laughs> they hide really well and they're really small but you can see that yucky. So I just keep going until I don't see any more. And then I will grab that neem spray. Come on guys, enough is enough with my plants. change of perspective <laughs> can also help you see them. Yeah, see, look, there's a whole cluster way over there that I missed, but because I changed location, oh, and here's some living up in the flower head. These are gonna be harder to get. I can at least get the ones around the base. Oop, and that one fell. There's no telling where you went. See that? Ew. Anyway, so that's what this looks like. <laughs> um, get you some ladybugs. Some places sell them this time of year. I may try going over to the farmer's exchange next weekend. They have them often. So I'm gonna see if I can't get some and release them into these plants and they can live in my gardens. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep going. And uh, if you have the same problem, go ahead and give this a try. Give the neem oil a try and uh, good luck.